everyone. Welcome to our Live at Five um, Sew Along. So today we're going to be um, working on block number five, the Whirly Gig block, in, in just a minute. But I wanted to share with you a couple of things. First of all, I gave you some ideas about um, putting together the blocks. This is just a, a basic suggestion of what you could do with the blocks. If you do all, I don't know, I think there's like 60 of them or 65 of them, you probably would have enough for several projects. You can do several table runners, several throw quilts, um, and these are just some basic layouts that you could use. Also, this is the layout from the uh, Shop Hop this last year. And so I actually have a pattern that you could use this layout, include um, eight of the blocks that we're doing on our Blockbuster Bash, and I called it Fill in the Blanks One. Um, on the cover, it also says uh, Spring Fling 22 and that sort of thing. So there were um, eight shops last year in the Shop Hop, and so each shop had a block available in the fabrics that you see. Those are gone, but I put that up here to show you that you could actually take this pattern and you could fill in the blanks with 12 inch blocks that we're doing in the Blockbuster Bash. You could do eight blocks or uh, and do the four blocks that you see in the corners or you could leave those four blocks out and do 12 of the blocks and then use the Delectable Mountains uh, blocks on the edges to make that frame around your piecing. So that's just some options of what, of what you could do with the blocks from the Blockbuster Bash series. So today's block is called Whirly Gig. So if you have comments, um, Tony's here monitoring again. I'm assuming you can see any comments that come up. For some reason, I could no longer see them on my computer, but she's monitoring it, so we're not going to worry about it. So. Um, what I have here is uh, just a uh, graphic image of the Whirly Gig block. And it includes several um, sections that we're going to talk about, we're going to demonstrate. But I wanted to show you kind of how this block is put together. Um, I have over here um, on my sheet the sections and I've got it separated um, and so it is basically a four patch we would talked about that before and I've got it separated so there's four equal segments on this and we're going to look at just one of them so that we can talk about how you actually make the pieces that you need for this section so this section um, there's actually four colors in my version but you could do just two colors. You could actually have all of these pieces be the same fabric. But I have four different fabrics. Let me show you which ones I'm using. I've got two reds, this little red star. I've got this red paisley. I've got a blue dot and a blue marbly fabric plus a gold. I actually have two golds. Because each of my segments have, has to have a half square. Let me grab all four of them so you can see. In the corner, there's a half square that includes that gold fabric and um, one of my colors. So I have a gold and red one, a gold and a blue one, a gold and a red two, and then the last one is the gold and the blue two. So in order to do that, I, am, I could actually take a square of each fabric and I could take four squares of gold and make my half squares and have some leftover squares. But instead of doing that, I actually took my colored squares and let me back it up just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to cut those in half at all the colored squares in half. And I only need one of my triangles of each one. So I'm just going to cut that in half. And on your instructions for what um, fabric you need, 
I just put two gold squares so that you can do this technique. And by the way, let's rewind just a minute after I get these cut because I want to show you something about the Blockbuster patterns. Um, and I've talked a little bit about this, but it might be helpful for some of you if I kind of repeat it. Your patterns that we're using, the Blockbuster series, are uh, patterns that are from the Studio 180 Design team. Um, and so they're going to have the name of the block, what tools you need or technique sheets you need. Um, it's going to have a level of difficulty indicator. We're just kind of ignoring that because I'm demonstrating everything for you. It's going to have some color options. Um, I chose this color option um, or even this one um, so that you could see all of that. Uh, there are four different colors on the outside of those blocks. There's also a diagram of the pieces and there's some basic information about um, how this is pieced. And then this one actually has two pages on the back is the chart for the finished sizes and a unit diagram that tells you what units you're going to need. And they are uh, matched up with my cutting instructions for what you need to cut in order to make those pieces. And um, let me turn back to this page. On this chart for a 12 inch block, it tells me that I need some two by four finished geese. So. I referred to the wing clipper instruction sheet and the chart here to get the sizes I need. Now, of course, you could do that too. I just did that for you, so it kind of cuts some of your time. And I did the same thing with the wing, um, the tucker trimmer instructions for this unit D half square unit that we're doing. The pickets and quickets are these units B and C, and um, the technique sheet, the pickets and quickets technique sheet would be very, very handy. It tells you what tool you need. It uh, gives the name of the technique sheet. There's some basic information of how you're going to use that. And there um, usually is a, a group of blocks that you could make with that unit. So just something to help you. And we carry all the technique sheets, all the tools, so we'd be happy to help you. So just give us a call if you need any of those. Pickets and Quickets is a fun little unit. We're going to be working more on that in a minute. So I have taken my gold square, and I've taken two of my triangles, and I've laid them down across there with the long edge butted up next to each other. Now, I would uh, take the time to pin this just because... I want to make sure that everything stays lined up the way I want it. So I'm going to pin the red side on, and I'm going to twist it around and pin the blue side on, and make sure that my um, cut edges are aligned next to each other. Then I'm going to take that to the sewing machine. Let me turn the light off or you won't be able to see. So I'm going to stitch using my presser foot, the quarter inch guide of my presser foot, right on the edge of that um, cut edge. If you're going to stitch over pins, slow down so that you don't hit it at a fast pace, because that's when you cause yourself a problem. And I can just slide right over that. And then if you're doing assembly line style, which is what I would recommend, you're going to grab the next one and you're going to line up those triangles. Put one of them on and line that up across the center of our gold square. Whatever square is in, or whatever color is in every one of your um, half squares, that's the one you want to leave as a whole square so that you can just butt these up together. Now notice I did not have to draw my lines on the way I would normally do um, if I'm doing half squares. Um, I would use my magic wand and draw a line across. But since I cut this into triangles, I'm just using that edge of my triangle as my stitching guide. And go on across that. So once you do that, then you're just going to stitch across the bottom. 
You can, of course, take it out or stitch into um, a fabric tag and turn it around. I just tend to just stitch right across the bottom of my unit and come back the other direction. And I do that anytime I'm sew sewing a double line like this. You've seen me do this before. So last week, I think it was last week, I had um, several people from out of the area that were out of the state even that put a comment. It's always fun to see where everybody is while they're watching. I think it was Georgia maybe. I don't remember for sure, but I just know it wasn't Arkansas. So I'm going to cut these apart and remove my pins. And now I'm going to have four half squares that are in those assorted colors that I need for my project. And all of these will be on the inside corners of that unit. So what I'm going to do is cut those apart and I'm just going to grab a cutting guide and cut down in between the stitching line. And basically all I'm doing is cutting the gold square in half to get those cut apart. And then I'm ready to, to trim that, um, press that, and then trim it. So let's go over to the overhead camera and see how this is going to work. All right, right so, so I, I did, did get um, another, another mat. mat. I just decided, decided it was time to update my mat. mat. And I forgot to turn on the iron, so let me get this heating while I talk. So you're going to press, um, I pressed toward the gold, but you could press opposite directions. If you can remember to press um, the two that are going to be opposite each other toward the gold, and then the other two toward the color. That may probably no sense. Let me say it again. I'm pressing my two blue ones toward the blue, and I'm pressing my two red ones toward the gold. And that helps them butt up uh, and nest when I get ready to stitch them. So I'm just going to set my iron on here. It's not completely hot yet, but you can get the idea of what I'm doing anyway. And if you're using the acorn pressing pin, now would be the time to grab it. By the way, these nibs can be replaced. We have the replacement nibs. But if you don't feel like you're getting any solution, just push on the nib. You can feel the liquid on your finger. It doesn't take much. And most of the time, you don't see it on your fabric. Um, sometimes if you aren't seeing any at all, you can see this shows up on the gold. In some colors, it shows for some reason. And some, some colors, colors you, you don't, don't see it at all. Okay. Your sound changed so much. You're in the phone. Okay. Okay. So we have an issue with the sound. We haven't figured it all out. But um, I have a different microphone on this camera just because of the issues we were having. So until we get figured out exactly what the problem is. This, this is, is the best, best we can do for now. So I am so sorry, but we'll just have to kind of go with that for now. Okay, so I just don't know. I'll tell you what. Let me go to, I'll do my trimming over here. Okay, so I am I think it will not echo with me sitting here. I've got two microphones, and they're fighting each other. So we'll just trim here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to trim to a two-and-a-half-inch uh, unit square, so that's going to finish at two inches. And all I have to do is line up the diagonal seam on that diagonal line, and I'm going to cut up. I'm going to cut across, and then I'm going to turn 180 degrees, and I'm going to cut again. This time I'm putting the two and a half inch line on my cut edges, and then I'm putting the diagonal line on my seam again, 
and I cut up and across and I'm ready to use this in my project. So I get a nice precise two and a half inch square that will finish at two inches. So I'm not gonna take the time to cut the others, but that's how you would cut all four of your half square units. And it's going to go right here in the corner. Let me put a different color there so you can see. That's where that goes. Um, and so when you get them all four done, it's ready to put in the project. So now let's talk about the other units. I need two flying geese, and then I need a picket of the same color for this corner. So to get my two flying geese and my picket, we're going to do the process that we normally do for making flying geese with um, one little exception. Normally, when you're making flying geese, you get four at a time using one large square and four small squares. For this project, I'm only using three small squares for each of my large uh, squares. And I had to have one of each of my colors. So I had a large square in the red paisley, a large square in the red star, and a large square of each of my blues. Then I also had three squares each of my background fabric. And I've already drawn my lines on the way I would normally do. And I'm going to line up. Remember to leave that little space at the corner here. You want to leave a little bit of room here at the back corner. And I'm going to stitch right down that line. And then when I get a little better than halfway across, I'm going to add another square and I'm going to line up right across the corner. And I also want to leave that little bit of extra space at the corner. And I would do this with all four of my colors. So I had two reds and two blues that I did this process to. I've already done the other red and the two blues. So I'm going to stitch right across. And once you get to the other side, then you're going to park your needle. And this is where you would cut in between the two lines of stitching. Just going to cut point to point. Remember, don't use your Quilter's Magic Wand to cut with because it's just not wide enough to protect your fingers. And then on this unit, I would press toward the smaller triangle. Just going to give it a little finger press real quick because I'm going to grab one of my other ones that I've already done to show you what the next step is. So I've just got my little finger pressing to done. So the next step would be... Find what I did with them. I'm going to grab my remaining background square and stitch it onto the corner just like I did every other time I made flying geese. When I get that done, that's going to give me my one, two flying geese. That's going to leave a leftover. And that's not going to be tossed. This is actually going to be used in making your... Um, your units, your pickets and quickets. So this is just one way of making the pickets. You're going to be using your um, wing clipper tool. And first of all, you're going to take this unit and do just like we've done every other time we've made flying geese. We're gonna cut in between the stitching line. We're going to press let me just give it a quick little finger press because I'm not going to take the time to trim it, but I'm going to show you. You would line up the long common diagonal line on the right seam, and then the left seam would match up with the line that matches the size you're after, and then you would trim on two sides, turn and trim the other two sides. So you would cut your flying geese just the same way you've done all your other flying geese. Then... For your picket that you're going to be using for this, you're going to actually line this up and you're going to make sure that it's in this orientation and that will actually be um, 
one of the things that you'll see on your Blockbuster pattern that you're going to download. It's on the page where you can see how to lay this. Then you're going to pretend this is going to be a goose with one wing. The long common diagonal line is going on the seam all the way across. I'm going to just adjust that a little bit. Once you get that in place, you want to make sure you can get all the way around the two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle with that long common diagonal on the seam. And we're going to cut up. And we're going to cut across. And then we're going to turn it 180 degrees. Now this time, you're going to actually cut off all the excess up here. You don't need that for this project. So I'm just lining up the four and a half by two and a half inch lines here. That also puts that bold mark right up here at the tip. That bold mark is going to line up right on that seam. And once I get that in place, I can trim this up and over. And that gives me my perfect picket that I need for this, for Quicket. Quicket is, is this one and Picket's the other one. It's the same basic unit, just the way you approach it is, is a little different. So this is where that unit goes. So you're going to actually stitch together um, your unit that has the gold triangle, that half square, to the ed end of this picket unit. And that's going to be the base of your uh, piece. The corners also have two flying geese stacked on top of each other. And remember when you stitch them one after the other, you want to press them the way they're flying. So this one's going to be pressed north like that. So that's the unit you're going to be doing. Now all we have left is this uh, picket unit. And the way we're going to do that is kind of the traditional way that you would do kind of a folded corner unit. Um, the instructions are going to tell you what size pieces you need. And you're going to need some rectangles of background and some squares of gold. And I've drawn one line across that. Now the thing is, is you want to make sure that you put this on here so that it leans the correct way. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. This particular one's, what would you say? Oh, I have done that too. Tony says, I've done that. I would lay this down either on the picture or um, you can lay it down on the picture of my block. But if you fold it on the line you've drawn and lay it on your uh, rectangle so that the angle is the correct angle, then when you open it up, you're automatically lined up to stitch it the right way. If I happen to lay it down this way, I can pretty quickly see that that is not matching this. And I want it to match in order for them to lean the way I want them to. So I'm going to line this up so that I get the same angle and then I just unfold it and I'm ready to stitch. I can take this to my sewing area my chair is about to slide out from under me, so let me fix it. So I've got my square here, and I'm going, going to stitch right on that line. Yes, you could. Somebody asked if you could use the corner pop tool for this, and yes, you can. In, um, in fact, you would use the line for um, a two-inch finished unit, so you'd have to refer to the corner pop instruction sheet for um, what size your replacement square would be and uh, that sort of thing but you'd use the number two line for doing your cutting so once i get one of those done i can check every one of these if i want to and that's probably um, safe for the first time you make this but i know that if if i've got the first one right and i just follow the others in the same manner that I'm going to end up with them um, leaning the way I want them to. So I would just make sure that the first one is the way it's supposed to be and then you can just do one after the other, do assembly line style. And when I get to the end of this, then I'm going to have all four of my pickets done. 
It's kind of like the, um, the picket fence. If you've seen um, little pickets on any block, that's where this um, little unit came from. But there's a lot of really cool things that you can include it in to make some interesting blocks. So once you get those squares sewn on, before you trim away the excess, this would be a good time to check and I would probably check with the picture because you're not going to have a, a block that's already made to look at. But if you looked at the photograph of the picture that will be in my instruction sheet, the uh, packet that tells what you need to cut, you can lay it down there and make sure the angle matches. If it doesn't match this angle, then you're going to have something that looks very different. Your block is going to look like this. It's a redesigning opportunity. So, you know, that it occasionally happens. Once you get these and you know they're the angle you want them to be, you have two options. You can either grab your cutter and a ruler that you can cut against and trim away the excess. And then you would press, I'm just gonna finger press it real quick. And you do that with all of them. You could also, if you prefer, use scissors to cut. You're going to have a straighter seam allowance if you use your, your uh, rotary cutter and your ruler, but sometimes they're just not close at hand. So you could do it this way and it would be fine. I'm just going to grab this and do all of them with my rotary cutter and my little square ruler. And that little triangle um, this excess triangle. I have a couple of things I could do with that. You could actually, after you cut them off, stitch this long side and end up with a half square to save to use for something else. You could also, before you cut that off, grab your marking tool and mark a half inch from your first uh, line that you marked. Then you could stitch this is a way to make some extra little half squares you could use for something else. You could stitch on that second line you've drawn. Now I drew it a half inch. I don't know if I'm going to have enough bobbin to get across this. We'll see. You could um, stitch a half inch from that first line. Let's just see if we had enough bobbin to complete it. Oh, I did. Almost. Close enough. So now I have... A, a little half square. This would finish after I trimmed it to um, a one and a quarter or a one inch half square. And I have my picket unit that I need. And I would just, again, cut between the lines of stitching the way I normally would. And some people like to do that to save that little bit of fabric. So that's something you can do anytime you're doing that picket unit. You can save that extra little bit of fabric. Mine, I'm just going to probably toss it, but that is something you could do with it. So um, now I would take all of these picket units and I would press them. I'm just going to finger press them and show you how you would trim it. Now before, when I trimmed the Quicket, remember I held it this way and I trimmed, and I can trim this one. Let me go to the ironing board real quick and press these. And I'm not going to change the camera because... The sound gets wonky and we're just going to press those real quick and I'm going to come back to this camera. So before, remember I laid my um, unit, this little unit that I did the quicket with, I laid it this way and that's the picture that you see on the Blockbuster pattern and I would lay my wing clipper tool so that the long diagonal line, the common diagonal, went on the long seam here. And I trimmed up and over, then I turned, and I was able to trim the other. And I'll do this one for you because this is the next one I'll need, and I'll have my two red ones already trimmed. So I'm going to move this camera up a little bit so I have room to work, and you can see what I'm doing. I'm just making sure that I have room all the way around my 2.5 by 4.5 inch rectangle. I'm going to cut up over and now I'm going to turn 180 degrees. This part up here is going to get trimmed away. I don't need it. So I'm going to line up the four and a half 
by two and a half inch lines on my cut edges. That bold marking is going to land right on the seam here. And I can actually take this piece, trim it, and I would have several little half squares that I could use in a block. So I'm not wasting that fabric. I'm probably not going to do that, but you could. So that is my uh, Picket Quicket. Then this one, notice, is leaning the other way. Let me lay them here so you can see that. One leads right and one leans left. You can see the edge of it there. On this one, I still want a four and a half by two and a half inch rectangle. All I have to do is put the line that's connected to the four and a half inch measurement on my seam. I'm going to trim up, over, and I'm going to turn 180 degrees, and then I'm going to line that up, and I'm going to trim up and over. And I end up with my pickets and my quickets being the right size. And I end up with the seam leaning the way I want it to in order to make this block work. So this is how this is assembled. I would have, um, this one hasn't been trimmed yet, but that one would go here. This would go here my two flying geese that I would finish with this unit by adding the next square on the corner, the same way we normally do. When I cut that and trim that, then I would end up with two flying geese that go here and my other picket goes up here. So I would stitch together two flying geese, uh, uh, one following the other and press toward the direction they're going. Then I would stitch my gold cornered picket onto the side of that. I would stitch my half square to the end of my quicket and then I assemble the whole thing and that's a fourth of the block. I'm going to actually do that four times. Once with my blue, uh, my two blues. Here's one of them. Here's the other blue. There's the red star and there's my final red Paisley. So once I get those four um, units, those corners done, I'm ready to assemble the whole block and it'll finish at 12 inches. This is your whirly gig block. And if you follow step by step in the direction all of the pieces need to go, then you'll be fine. And it's a little um, bit of a challenge just because of the way the, the pickets and quickets lean and the way all of the pieces go together. So, any questions I need to answer? Okay, I'm still going to continue to see if I can figure out what the deal is with the, the audio. Our microphones are fighting each other, and I don't know why, because it just all of a sudden happens. So, um, until next week, happy sewing, and next week we'll be doing block number six of our Blockbuster Bash. If you get the emails, um, there will be a link in there to download the blockbuster pattern and there will be a link for our google file that has my cutting instructions and don't forget we have all of the tools and all of the uh, technique sheets that we can pro provide for you just give us a call or shop on our website um, and our contact information is right below my uh, screen there so happy sewing we'll see you next time